Okay, so chapter nine is one of my favorite chapters, Properties of Gases. Why do we study gases in particular? Well, as it turns out, they share a lot of the same properties physically. So here's some of our favorite gases. Eleven of the elements are gases normally. They're called out here. About half are the diatomics. So we learned about the diatomics before there were seven of them. Five of those end up being gases. The other six are these noble gases that are just in this column on their own. So they're easy to find. It turns out that if you have a compound with a very low molar mass, it will tend to also be a gas like carbon dioxide and hydrogen chloride, for example. Now these properties are very similar particularly at low temperatures. Okay, all right, so at low temperatures, if you are still a gas, you're going to behave very similarly to every other gas. What is it that makes that happen? Well, it's because if we have low pressure, we have low density. That means things are not close together. If they're not close together, we don't have to worry about those intermolecular forces that we were talking about earlier in the semester. The other thing that is also responsible is the fact that the gases are in constant motion. They're moving. So this bottom right is trying to depict the motion and how far apart things are. Now if you go and you look into gases, one of the things you can find out is that you can compress them. Because the individual atoms or molecules are so far apart, you can push them closer together. If you try to do that with a solid or a liquid, it doesn't want to push together at all. The other thing is the business of motion. So compressibility was still talking about the fact that they're far apart. If they're far apart, you can push them together. The second thing is this business of motion. You have a balloon. Let's say you didn't tie a knot in it yet. You just open it up. The gas is going to go flying out of it because you put it in under pressure. They don't want to be that close together. Out they come. The other thing is balloons, unless you get a specially shaped balloon, will be spherical. So, you know, you don't see them spontaneously having little lumps and bumps in them that come and go. That means the motion of all these tiny little particles is chaotic. It doesn't care which direction it's going. They don't all line up and go in the same direction at the same time. So we have this ceaseless, rapid, chaotic motion of things that are far apart, relatively speaking. Gases. Well, you can't see them. You look through the air and you think there's nothing there. You don't feel it unless you're going down the freeway at 70 miles an hour. You roll down the window and put your hand out. Then you're like, oh yeah, I feel the air. It's pushing my hand back, right? Gases being compressible is part of the reason that makes them very interesting. And these properties that we're going to talk about, there's three of them and uh, three different sets of chemists investigated this. I say chemists. Some people may claim they're physicists. Okay, scientists. The volume is inversely proportional to the pressure. If you push on it, you're going to decrease the volume. Okay? If you increase the temperature, the pressure is going to go up. You might notice that in your tires on your car because in the summer, when it's very hot, uh, you might actually need to let a little air out of your tires so you don't have the pressure higher than the manufacturer recommends. On the other hand, when winter comes along, you might find out the pressure in your tire is low, and so you have to add a little more air to it. Speaking of adding a little more air to it, pressure is directly proportional to the quantity of gas. So when my pressure was low, I put more air in the tire to increase the pressure. Gases mix. You know, we're in this room, it's 75% uh, roughly nitrogen, which doesn't do us any good to breathe. Well, it's not like the oxygen is all at the bottom quarter of the room or the top quarter of the room. No, it's completely mixed in. The densities of gases are directly proportional to their molecular mass. Okay, that sort of tells us 
that things tend to be about the same as far as how far apart they are, and then the weight of the individual particle is what matters. Gases always expand and occupy the whole room that they're given. You don't find any places where there's a vacuum and there's no gas. And here's a new word, probably. Gases effuse at rates inversely proportional to molar mass. They're going to escape through a hole at a rate that is opposite to their molar mass. Things that are lighter get through those tiny holes faster. Volume is inversely proportional. I don't know what this proportionality constant is at the moment, but volume is inversely proportional to pressure. We're also saying that pressure is directly following temperature, which means P equals some other constant times temperature. And pressure depends on how much, this is the number of moles, of something there is. So again, P equals yet another K times N. And ultimately, what we find out then is that we can express it all within one gas law as PV equals NRT. So you can see that P and V, if you transferred P to the other side, it would end up being in the denominator. So that would fit this. Pressure is proportional to temperature, yes. Pressure is proportional to the number of moles, yes. So we end up with something like this. And we can start talking about what the units are. You know, this is normally in atmospheres, and the volume is in liters. This is the number of moles. What's R? R, <laughs> R is the gas constant. And it's what's going to have all the units in it that help everything else cancel out so that it will be okay, because temperature's in Kelvin. So you can see that we have a problem here because none of these match. But if R, the gas constant, is in atmospheres and liters over moles and Kelvin, atmospheres and liters over moles and Kelvin, well, the Kelvin cancels, the mole cancels, and we have atmosphere liters. Okay, great. That's what we're dealing with here.